Okay, we're here, winter meetings, so much going on. Okay, how did Dave Dombrowski pull off this Chris Sale trade? Well, Dave is very, very aggressive. We were in Nashville nine years ago and he was able to pull off probably the biggest deal of the last 20 years, at least in my mind, to get Miguel Cabrera for his top two prospects at the time. Cameron Mabin, still in the majors, not a star though. Andrew Miller, who took five years to become a star and now is a big star as we know, but that was just a great trade by Dombrowski. Obviously has a lot of guts willing to take chances. He had the prospects to get it done. Obviously, Ben Sherrington did a good job loading up with the prospects. Uh, Mankata and Kopech were tough to beat. And Dave knew that. He offered it, both of them on Saturday, let the, let the White Sox ruminate a little bit. The White Sox saw the Nats come charging the day before the deal got done at night. Uh, the Nats offered Robles, they offered Lopez, they offered Giolito, their top three young players, but that just wasn't going to beat the high yeah. ceiling of Mancata and Kopak and the two others that they did get. So great job by Rick Hahn, and Dombrowski obviously makes the big move. Now who's next from the White Sox, Frazier, Abreu, who's next? Well, I think Frazier is probably going to get traded. He's got one year to go before free agency, so uh, he would be on the block. If he's not traded now, he'll probably be at the deadline. But uh, you hear the Dodgers, but I think the Dodgers' top choice is still to go back to Justin Turner. They loved him. He did a terrific job for them. I think Frazier is more of a backup plan for them. You hear there are other teams for Frazier. We haven't been able to find him. It's a tough third base market right now. I think Quintana is the big fish, though. Four years to go, left-hander. Excellent, excellent young pitcher. You hear Houston is in the mix. Uh, mm -hmm. They like him very much. They've got some good young players uh, left that they could make a deal for. They've got a, an outfielder, a couple pitchers. Martez, pretty good mm -hmm. young pitcher. So Houston could try to pull off uh, Quintana. I've heard the Braves and I've heard a lot of other teams. So you've got Eaton as well. They've got, they've yeah. got players with the White Sox. Uh, the Nats, the Rangers, uh, Cardinals could all be in the market for a center fielder. So Eaton could be traded. Melky Cabrera, I don't think much of a market at this point. Now we'll take it over to the Rockies. Signing Ian Desmond, does this mean there's an outfielder that will be moved? I don't think necessarily. Um, you know, I think Desmond will play first base, as they're saying. That is the plan. Now, of course, you know, anything can happen. We, we've seen that before. But uh, I think uh, right now they just have a very strong outfield yeah. uh, with Cargo, with, with Dahl, with Blackman. There will be people come calling for Blackman and for Cargo. Cargo's got a year to go. He's, he and they are not talking about a long-term deal. So he's logical to move, if not now, then at the deadline if they're not in the race. So uh, the Rockies definitely have some options. Desmond gives them a lot of those options because he's very versatile. He can move to another position if he has to. Obviously, he can play shortstop. He proved he can play center field last year with Texas. So a very interesting signing. Uh, it came down to Trumbo or a Desmond, and uh, Trumbo really makes a lot of sense yeah. in Coors Field. Could hit 50 home runs there. They made an unusual choice, but uh, Desmond is a very nice player, and uh, they should be quite happy with him. But as I say, in the, at the winter means you never know what might happen. You never know. And that's right, you never know. So keep Keep it at FanRag Sports. Thank you so much, John.